What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I've got a very special treat for you. We have got the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. I feel really stupid for doing this, but <laughs> it's, it's a great way to show off one of my favorite features of the new F-150 Lightning and that is that mega power frunk. So in this video, we're gonna do quite a few different things. We're going to actually test drive this thing. We're going to live with it for quite a few days, experience what it's like to drive an F-150 Lightning, look at things like the range on the vehicle. We're going to look at the, the charging and how you can uh, expect to live with this particular vehicle. And I'm really, really excited to share this video with you guys. So I think it's pretty fitting that we start this walk around at that mega power frunk. Uh, by the way, that's gonna be the last time that I say that term. I'm just gonna call it a front trunk from here going forward. But Ford gives you the ability to uh, uh, open it on a couple of different locations. You've got the key fob. You've also got a button on the dashboard itself. There's also a button located here if you wanted to close this front trunk. And then you also have an emergency button that is surrounded by a glow. Uh, so that way, if you do happen to find yourself stuck in here, uh, there's a safety security of being able to get yourself out of the vehicle. So it's nice that Ford includes that. Now there's a couple of cool things about this area is you can have a, uh, a capacity up to a 400 pounds, as you can see right here, and it says 400 L. Well, what in the world does that mean? That is exactly right. This thing actually can double as a drain or, or a, as a cooler since it has a drain plug located right here. So you can put your ice, uh, you can put things in here like a, the divider. And so you can have some things on one side, some things on the other side. It's just really cool how Ford has engineered this whole thing to go together. Um, so yeah, I really do like this. Now there's a couple of other things uh, that I want to show you in the, uh, the, uh, this, this area that you might want to notice that you've got these little tie down points. Notice how these have got Ford written on the actual bolts. The reason they do that is those are designed to easily be removed. So that way, if you wanted to add a different accessory later on down life's highway to divide up your area in that front trunk, you have the ability to do so. So pretty cool stuff. Now there's also going to be some really nice led lights that are located underneath the hood. So that way, if you're operating this thing at night, you can still see everything that you've got underneath the hood of the truck. Now, in addition to that, you've also got, ah, look at the battery. That, that's a massive battery. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's actually the 12 volt battery. That's, that's designed to operate the smaller things in the vehicle. Oh, that's excuse not, me. We're making, <laughs> we're making a video. That's, that's not the one that's going to power the whole vehicle, right? I hope not. <laughs> no, it's no. This, small. This, <laughs> this, guys, if you don't know, uh, you've been living under a rock, but this is Nate Dog, Nathan from TC Customs. What's up? Uh, so uh, he runs our TC Customs department out here in Pell City. If you want some more information about customizing your vehicle, you can give us a call right there. Um, but uh, I know you've got some big plans for this thing. Yeah, we're going to try some stuff out. I know that there's, you know, th this is one of the few that are out there right now, actually, physically out in the world so we're going to try some stuff on it maybe maybe see if we can fit a leveling kit maybe some wheels and tires maybe a bed cover and uh, i think you got some plans on seeing what that does maybe to the drivability and how far it can go yeah and, I, and that that might be a, a a a tandem video we might get you to help us with the with the install and the you know since you're that's kind of your specialty uh, and then, yeah, I, I'll let you trick it out and let me play with it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't already done so, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification turned on if you want to see some videos just like that. So, Nathan, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate you joining us, man. No appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, getting back to this particular battery, this is not the battery that's driving the wheels. This is the battery that is driving the accessories, you know, uh, around the vehicle that just allow you to operate. Uh, very similar to how you have a normal battery inside of a normal F-150, except for this battery is a lot smaller because the big battery pack that's underneath the vehicle can actually power a lot more than it can with a traditional gas engine. Now let's show you what you get in this particular plastic bag. So this is going to be the charger that comes with the standard range battery. So just like a Mustang Mach-E, you have got a wall mounted so you can actually Take this little, where does it go? Yeah, it comes from right here. There you go. So you take this piece and you drill it to the wall inside of your house. You take this piece and snap it on there. And then you take this and plug that into the vehicle. That's what this boils down to, is you've got the charger located right here. Now, you, what's nice about this little charger is that it does give you uh, a couple of different options. 
You have the plug for the 240, I believe that is, or 220-240. I'm not an electrician, so <laughs> don't roast me down in the comments. Uh, but you have you can plug that in here, and it works like that. If you don't have one of those plugs, you they also give you the extension for a normal household outlet plug, which is really, really nice. Now, uh, so you, it's nice that Ford gives you the ability to have both of the plugs right at, out of the box with the mobile charger. Now, if you happen to get the extended range version of the F-150 Lightning, you get an upgrade to that. You get the bigger, uh, I think it's an 80 amp charger that is supposed to be the fastest charging you can actually get in a residential setting uh, outside of you know like a level three you have to go to a commercial setting to get that kind of charge levels it's nice that ford includes that on the extended range but if you get the standard pack and you want to buy it it's extremely expensive that might be something you want to consider when you're comparing the standard range to the extended range on the f-150 lightning one last thing i love about this front trunk is the ability to store and secure your items that you don't want people to see so, you know, when I'm traveling, I've usually got our really expensive camera gear that can range up to thousands of dollars worth. And if someone sees my backpack in the back seat, they can just smash a window, grab it and run. But up here, just throw your backpack up here. Nobody can see it. Nobody can access it and nobody can smash a window and grab it. So that is one of my biggest excitement things that I'm so excited for on my personal F-150 Lightning that I've got to order. Now, if you if you guys have watched a lot of our videos, I've mentioned it one time before, but I do have an F-150 Lightning uh, coming for my own personal use. And uh, I think the timing is just about, <laughs> about perfect. So I can't wait to share more details with you guys on exactly how I've got that thing optioned. Uh, so make sure you stick around on the channel if you want to see exactly what I ordered, why I ordered it, and things like that. So let's take a look at the, uh, the back side of the truck really quick, and then we'll end it with the inside, and then we'll go take it for that extended test drive and see exactly what it's like for the range and also high-speed charging. On the side of the F-150 Lightning, a lot of it looks normal, like a normal gas or uh, ice internal combustion engine F-150 with one major exception. You've got your charge port located up here on the driver's side front fender. And you'll notice you've got the port here. You flip it down here if you're gonna be using that level three fast charger. And you also have an indicator light located right here about how much charge you have left. So you don't actually have to get in the vehicle if you don't want to. Now there is a similar looking charge port on the passenger side. That is just for aesthetics. It's just for the balance to make sure the left side looks like the right side. So interesting there. You'll also notice that the uh, running board is actually a little bit different as well. You've got extra lights here. Ford also claims this is a more aerodynamic, uh, a more aerodynamic step board, and that's designed to help you extend that range, as well as the wheels and the tires. Some people have said, I'm not a big fan of those wheels, but the reason Ford did that is you've got all this big space that it does help with the aerodynamics, which helps uh, increase that range as well. Moving along right here, you can see that the Lightning badge itself on the side of the truck is really nice high and classy because they're individual separate raised letters it is not very cheap to do lettering just like this so i'm glad that ford took that extra time and effort to make it like that uh, but i love the rear tailgate this is going to be one thing that is very different on the lightning versus the other ones because this one does have that big bar light bar going across the back just like it's got one going across the front they took that time to redesign the entire tailgate uh, but you do have the power up power down and it would help <laughs> if the thing there we go uh, so you've got your power down tailgate right here. This one does not have the optional spray and bed liner in it yet, but you still have the tailgate step, which comes with a couple of different things like your measuring uh, stick. You can actually measure off everything. You can clamp things down just like a normal ICE F-150. You still got a lot of functionality in this truck. Just because it's electric doesn't mean you can't work out of it. Now, the other thing that I want to show you, this is one of their big, big party tricks on the F-150 Lightning, and that's going to be powering everything else. Now, this has got, as you can see, two household outlets here, another two here, and then you've also got your 240 located right here, and you've also got your breakers here if you need to reset those. Um, now, as you probably have heard a couple people say, is Ford Motor Company gives you the ability to do bi-directional charging uh, if you have the right equipment installed in your house. Keep in mind that you have to have two features for it. You have to have the high-end charger, that connected charger that I mentioned to you guys earlier, or I think I mentioned it to you. Uh, but if you get the standard range pack, you can still do this, but you have to buy that charger separate a la carte. And then you have to go buy the Sunrun uh, bi-directional charging kit. Uh, I forgot exactly what they have, but it's, it's about a $4,000 part. So 
between the charger and the $4,000 setup, you're talking a lot of money just to have uh, the, the ability to charge your house in case your power goes out. Uh, but if you live in a situation where that happens pretty frequently, it might be something you want to consider. One thing that I love about the F-150 Lightning is the fact that it doesn't look like you're driving a spaceship. It is very similar to the normal F-150. And that's a good thing for a couple different reasons. One, the F-150 has been the number one selling vehicle for many, many, many years. And uh, what's that saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so you still have all of the functionality, like you know your, your thing that goes down and you have this nice work surface on the inside that is still a feature um, just like it is on the normal f-150 you have your wireless phone charger you've got a lot of different options that come creature comforts that come in a normal f-150 you've also got on this one the adaptive cruise control uh, we're going to be testing that out in, in here in just a second as well so make sure you stick around for that uh, but you've got more household outlet plugs here more in the back it just i love the fact that this fits more into a uh, a normal person's life, then, then I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that sometimes in the past people have had the thought that electric might not be for me because the barrier to entry where, and I'm not talking about the cost, I'm talking about, I don't want people thinking I'm driving some weird fancy electric vehicle, or I, I want a vehicle that I can still work out of, pickup truck, I want a vehicle that I can still tow with, pickup truck. I think that Ford did a really good job of mixing practicality with efficiency. The technology in this vehicle is really where the lightning shines. You'll notice this massive 15 and a half inch touchscreen is directly out of the Mustang Mach-E and it's got a lot of the features, a lot of the same features that you've come to know, love and enjoy and a lot of people really had good positive things to say about this Sync 4A system. By the way, Sync 4 is this new version of the software. The A denotes that the screen is vertical instead of uh, horizontal so pretty neat stuff there but you've got a couple of different things as I drive this vehicle and as I'm using it more these little tiles down here will automatically adjust to what I use the most pretty cool stuff there but you come up here and you can play around with some of the different things you've got the driver assist technologies going on a lot of things like that in addition to that you also have your 12 inch instrument cluster and inside of that instrument cluster you've got everything that you come to expect out of a normal f-150 uh, I'm not going to sit here and go through every single menu you, but one thing that I do want to point out to you is that we have 218 miles worth of estimated range on 100% battery left. And that is going to be where our range test starts. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing out for its maiden voyage. I'm not sure if I've already mentioned this, but this is the first time I have actually had a chance to drive the Lightning myself. Uh, so you're getting to see my first reactions and first experiences. Now, I will tell you that uh, we currently have 144.5 miles on the odometer right now. I'm going to go ahead and reset the trip meter. Once again, it's got 100% charge. Now, since it is 93 degrees, well, it was 91 just a second ago, uh, and we've had the air conditioner on while we've been filming the first half of this video, the range has gone down a mile or two. Nothing too drastic is really what's gonna make the biggest difference is my speed and uh, the driving conditions and things like that. Speaking of speed, uh, this thing does have the adaptive cruise control, and I'm going to be setting that adaptive cruise control to the intelligent adaptive cruise control. So basically, Basically what's going to happen is anytime I have the ability, I'm going to be using adaptive cruise control and the truck is looking for speed limit signs. And if it sees that speed limit sign, which it picks up almost every one of them in other F-150s, that it will adjust my speed on the adaptive cruise control to what that speed limit is but I'm gonna have a tolerance added to five miles an hour. So in other words, if the speed limit is 40, the truck will set the cruise control to 45. That way we kind of get a real world uh, application of how many miles you can go on a single charge in the regular or the short, the smaller battery of the F-150 Lightning. Uh, now also I wanna reiterate, it's 91, 93 degrees, depending on what time of the day it is. So just kind of keep in mind that that the temperature also plays a role in how much range you get. The air conditioner, how hard you're pumping it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do there is I'm going to set that uh, temperature to exactly 72 degrees and I'm going to leave it on automatic on the three speed of the automatic so that way we kind of get a really good idea but before we can really get it on the interstate and really see what this thing's looking like, the most important thing is gotta make a stop. Yep, very, very important stop, Chick-fil-A. Thank you very much. Awesome. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Okay.
now that we've got our food, we can continue on with our little test drive and see exactly what this thing's about. Now, what is kind of cool about this is, is that nobody really noticed that this was anything ultra special, even though it really is. And that kind of goes back to that point that I made earlier that this truck really can fly under the radar if that's something that you're wanting to do. As a pickup truck owner, you're not really wanting to go flashy, flashy, flashy. I mean, I guess some people do. But yeah, for me on a pickup truck, I kind of just want a pickup truck that has the benefits of an electric vehicle. So there you go. All right, now let's go ahead and merge right onto the interstate. Now, as I'm coming up to uh, speed for the interstate, uh, I will tell you that I love the new uh, images, the imagery, the gauge for the actual lightning. Uh, they've got all different kind of animations set up for that since it's all LCD. And it really is a fresh, clean uh, overhaul compared to the 21 and 22 F-150. You can tell that it is definitely something different than just a normal F-150. I've had a lot of people in the reviews say, oh, I can notice a big difference with that independent rear suspension. I mean, I haven't been thrashing the truck around. That's probably when you'll notice the difference. But just in normal cruising everyday life, it feels kind of normal. <laughs> just it's a time for an almost halfway update on this range test. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that the F-150 actually has a 57% state of charge left over. Now, it does take it a minute for it to show up on the instrument cluster, but a 57% state of charge and 122 miles worth of range left, as you can see it right there. Now, uh, fun fact, I've been struggling to see that percentage state of charge while I'm driving. Uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to show you uh, while the vehicle is parked. Now, the other reason I wanted to show it to you while it's parked is take a look at this. I'm actually at the children's hospital because my son's got appendicitis and I've been doing a lot of back and forth from home to the, to the hospital. And uh, look what I found here. <laughs> Charge ports located in the parking deck. Now, the, what's cool about this is there's, you know, a good number of them. Uh, a good number of chargers located right here, but they're very low key. They don't stick out. They're not right next to the main entrance. And that's one of the things that I don't think a lot of people think about when they think, oh, this thing's only got 230 miles worth of range. They, what they don't realize is there's more places to charge while you're doing your everyday life. Um, and so this, I have not used it because I don't want to jeopardize this range test, but this is 100% free charging outside of the obvious. You got to pay to get into the, into the parking deck. But as a, you know, a parent to a patient, I don't have to pay for the parking deck. So I literally get free charge ups here. Now, it's, once again, it's not level three fast charging, but it is a good enough thing to kind of trickle charge you, keep you running while you're actually driving your Lightning on a daily basis. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and hop in it. And let's go ahead and hop back on the interstate and finish up this range test. The factory navigation system actually has the turn by turn directions built into the instrument cluster. How stinking cool is that? That looks really clean. I'm not actually getting off at that interstate access, but I just wanted to show you how nice and integrated that is into the LCD touchscreen. Now, I want to show you we're right at 50% state of charge. Uh, notice that the miles per kilowatt hour, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, and we've gone 127.3 miles in a 50% uh, worth of the battery. So if you're looking at that, I mean, you're basically gonna be getting almost 260 miles on this particular charge. Now, once again, I'm being very intentional, staying out of the, the throttle, um, which is not easy because <laughs> this thing, it, I know it's fast, but I haven't felt it yet. But man, I, I tell you, it, we've gone 127 miles already on 50% charge, but look at the range is only estimating that we have 104 miles left even though we still have 50% charge. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this rest of this battery plays out. All right, as we come a little bit closer to the end of this range test, it has dipped back down to 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. We are at 170 miles on the trip meter and I've got 56 miles until the vehicle is completely dead and stranded on the side of the road. And I've got about 10 miles until I get to the DC fast charger that I've selected. We're gonna go into depth on talking about charging and things like that, but I just kinda wanted to throw those stats out there to you guys before we pull up into the charging station. 
And as you can see, I just dipped below 50 miles until the range is depleted. And as you can see, you have got this particular driving warning that has come up, driving range low, and you can just hit okay right here to skip that. Now, the good news is, is that the exit that we're getting off at is coming up very, very soon. We're only four miles away from the charger. So realistically, this is a very real test. I don't think that I would ever like to get very much lower than 50 miles of range until I start having the ability to, to charge back up. Whether I'm on a long distance trip like this or if I'm just commuting back and forth to work, 50 miles is really the minimum that I want to be at on a fuel vehicle, you know, an internal combustion engine vehicle or on, a, uh, on an electric vehicle. It doesn't make a difference. I don't like to get too low because you know bad things can happen and by the way if you want to know what bad things can happen if you run your ev completely out i will have a link up in the cards and it, you can actually see what happens if you run your mustang mach e electric vehicle all the way out it's very interesting you want to see this video so the cool thing about the Ford Charge Network, the Ford Blue Oval Network, is there's a lot of different manufacturers of chargers that have come together to form up this particular network. Now this particular one that we're going to happens to be owned by Electrify America. And in fact, you can see it way off in the distance there. But what I wanna point out to you is that this thing is located in the parking lot of the Walmart Supercenter. So if it's something you wanna go and, and, and go grocery shopping, or if you want to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, that's right there, right next to it, literally, uh, right next to a Dairy Queen, which that's a, maybe a thing only in the South, but it's really nice that it's it's right in the middle of everything else. So you're getting you know fueled back up, if you will. At the same time, you can get some stuff done. It's not just dead time. All right, and here are the final results. We went 180 miles exactly over five hours and 23 minutes, and we burned up 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. And uh, as you can see, we have 46 miles worth of range left over. Uh, that really is the particular sweet spot because uh, what you wanna make sure that you're doing when you're trying to do, oh, that says unavailable. Oh, that's gonna suck. <laughs> Didn't notice that until just now. So this is one of the inherent downsides of uh, EV charging. So let's see if all of these are showing unavailable. Oh my goodness, I hope not. All right, so this, okay, good. So this particular charger is available, but that one's not. I, I guess, I don't know. I guess there's just issues with that one particularly. Now I wanna reach back in here and grab my cell phone for a reason. I'm gonna go in here and open up the Ford Pass app and the cool thing is, is you can actually go through and you can view, yeah, so we got 24% state of charge left, 46 miles uh, until empty. And you can actually go in here and use one of the free 250 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts worth of charge they give you. So when you buy the Lightning, they give you 250 kilowatts worth of fast charging automatically. Um, and, and we can do that on this particular one, but I don't want to for a very specific reason. And that specific reason is I wanna know what it actually costs. Uh, because a lot of people wanna know what does it cost to do a fast charge versus a non-fast charge. So I am gonna opt not to do the free charging and I'm going to do the expensive charging. Well, I say expensive. We're gonna find out here in a second exactly how expensive it is. One thing you will notice about this particular cord is you've got the extra plugs down here at the bottom. That is one of the things that allows the extra fast charging. You also notice this cable is extremely thick. Uh, rumor on the street is it's actually water cooled so that way all of the cords actually stay nice and cool and can deliver as much power as the F-150 Lightning can handle. Okay, so uh, a quick update, my, my GoPro is fried up on me. So <laughs> I had to whip out my cell phone to, uh, to do this. When I plug the vehicle up to the vehicle itself, by the way, it is 730 and you guys already know what kind of state of charge it's got. It automatically noticed that I had signed up for the Blue Oval Ford Charging Network and it didn't even require, <laughs> that is crazy, it didn't even require me to have a, uh, a credit card on file because it's got it inside of that Ford Pass app. Uh, so I didn't even get a chance to use my, my credit card here. It just knows that that vehicle is connected to my Ford Pass and my Ford Pass is connected to my credit card. That's, that's absolutely crazy. But yeah, 24% state of charge 
at 730. Let's see what this thing looks like. And once again, I'm gonna show you all of the costs that are associated with this DC fast charging. No questions asked there. So that is definitely gonna happen. I am also going to show you exactly what it would have cost to charge that exact same uh, charge level uh, at home. Because what a lot of people don't realize is you're paying more here uh, for the speed of that high speed charging state. Uh, so that, keep that in mind as well. It is extremely inexpensive to jump in and, and charge this thing from the house. All right, as for the home charging, once again, home charging is a lot less expensive than it is to fast charge. But let's talk about the home charge. We started out with 24% state of charge on the vehicle, and we wanted to take it to 80% because that's what we're gonna do here today. That's really where you have that window for the fastest charging possible, okay? Now, that 24%, to 80 percent so we're going to do 80 minus 24 that's a 56 percent change in the batteries what we're going to be doing here today and this thing has a 98 kilowatt hour times that by 56 percent you are looking at 54.88 kilowatt hours okay so just kind of keep that in mind for just a second uh, i pulled up a particular uh, spreadsheet where i went through my uh, my personal electric bill now keep in mind everybody's electric bill is going to be a little bit differently uh, but I looked at mine and I'm actually averaging 13.98 cents per kilowatt hour, okay? So I'm going to copy uh, that particular number right there and I'm going to multiply it by the kilowatt uh, kilowatts that we're adding to the vehicle, okay? This particular charge should at home only cost me about $7.67. Let's see what Electrify America charges us for it. Now it is taking me a little bit of time just to set up all the filming for this particular video, but if I wasn't filming for this video, I probably would step inside the Walmart or the restaurants that are just behind me. Uh, one downside I do have to say is that there's nobody coming right now, but this is a pretty frequented uh, version of the parking lot. And so, uh, you know, I don't think they really designed the F-150. Uh, <laughs> This little charge station is probably just used to smaller vehicles, not big old F-150s getting charged. But man, it is amazing the number of looks we're actually getting as people drive on by through here. Oh, and uh, look at this. I think we have a guy that is wanting to come see the Lightning. No, you're good, man. Well, take a look at it. I'm, like, I'm thinking about getting one. Is this fully electric? Yeah, 100% electric. Is there enough of these stations around? Like, say if I want to go to the beach or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what's your first impressions? I really like it, man. Just looking in here, that looks awesome. Well, I think he approves of the truck. It's pretty cool to see a customer or a really just a normal person's raw reaction, not someone who's biased like I am. And at least I'm not afraid to admit that I'm biased. But anyways, let's take a look at the state of charge. We've got 57%. I don't know if that glare is coming off right. There we go, 57%. And uh, it is... 750 so really only 20 minutes and a decent amount of charge and as you can see we're actually charging at 103 kilowatts uh right now so that's that's actually a pretty decent speed uh as you can see right there and we've already delivered 33 kilowatt hours to the truck itself uh so pretty sweet stuff there and, uh, and look at this it's only cost us six dollars and 40 cents I want to remind you once again that it is significantly less expensive to charge from home and me and my driving i probably would only use electrify america or the one of these fast chargers very limited maybe one percent of the time it's really only when i'm going on a long long distance uh trip and i happen to not take my wife's expedition i want to take the lightning instead but here oh did you yeah this is a downside of charging an ev if i'm fixing to get hit by a nasty storm uh, it's gonna get interesting here in a second, but that's really not a downside of EV. That could also be a downside of, you know, refueling at a gas station too. The good news is it's got a nice dry cabin. So let's go ahead and shut this frunk and chill out in there. Since it is a little toasty outside, I did wanna go ahead and let the vehicle run as we're charging up. So the speed is not gonna be nearly as fast uh, as if I had the vehicle completely shut off. Don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference, but uh, you can actually see the progression bar uh, increase as time goes on. And yes, I can still keep on my AC as we're charging up. So still got all my creature comforts and still can just chill out while this thing is charging. Once again, I'm not gonna take it to the 90% that it's recommending here. We're only going to take it to the 
80 percent so that way we can see because really that's that sweet spot is somewhere around 20 percent to an 80 percent charge that is where you get most of the fast charging done all right and that is 80 percent right there and not too bad. We are looking, it is 8.05 right now. So yeah, you're looking at 35 minutes and we picked up a pretty decent amount of range, 134 miles if my redneck arithmetic is uh, looking right. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the truck back off. Let's take a look and see what the damages are here. All right, state of charge. Let's see if we can wipe this wet screen off. And as you can see, okay, it's glitching. Apparently it doesn't like water. <laughs> Let's see if we can wipe it dry. All right, so we are looking, yep, it's, it's tripping out over the water. We are looking at $11.20 for 35 minutes worth of charging time. And uh, yeah, 134, 134 miles for $11.52. Compare that to what it would cost charging at home, because once again, that's where 99.9% .9 of most of your charging will get done unless you're on a road trip. But overall, not a bad little experience for uh you know fast charging so guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was enjoyable hopefully it was fun to watch i'll tell you that lightning looks really cool underneath those green lights but anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video it's a lot of fun for me to make it and we got a lot more tests coming up as i've mentioned to you i've got my lightning it's going to be an extended range with the max trailer tow package we're going to do some even more tests with this particular f-150 lightning and if you want to see those videos you got to make sure you're subscribed or you're going to miss them and if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace.